Hey guys, this is Feeding Frenzy 91. I'm talking about just how gaming used to be in a way. Now, recently I watched a Spawnway video and then saw an IGN article on how Super Punch Out, they had uh, some secret cheats. And I'm not gonna go into that. You guys can see them. I'll put, I, should, I should put both in the description. It, but it kind of made me think about how games used to be and how games are now. Like, games back in the day used to have so many secrets. And I'm not saying the games today don't like secrets or Easter eggs. But what I am saying is that games back in the day used to basically not tell you a lot. So you didn't even know certain things sometimes until you had gotten real far in the game. And then you're like, what? I mean, like, look even back to the super, original Super Mario Brothers. They don't tell you mushrooms are good. They don't tell you that the mushroom-looking things, Goombas, with eyes will kill you if you are small. But you'd mess around with it. Of course, for those with like older siblings and cousins or whoever basically probably told you, but you mess around with it and you figure it out. And that's how a lot of games used to be back in the day. You used to mess around with them and figure things out. Like nowadays, and, and once again, of course, if someone played it before you, they, they could tell you. But nowadays, I'm not even talking about how online people reveal a lot of secrets. I'm talking about the games tell you a lot of stuff. Like, a lot of games, they now tell you, like, they give you instructions on how to do your stuff. They put you in situations where you have to do certain things, and they're like, hey, do this to do this. So I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In fact, it's kind of like good and bad, because back in the day, I feel like that made us a lot better, or maybe made us get better at games faster, because we had to figure a lot of stuff out. Like, in, I think it was Mega Man X2, where when you fall to wherever, and you have to figure out that you can wall jump. Like, they don't say, do this to wall jump. You just have to figure it out. So, I think that made us use our minds a lot more in the video games than they do now. But at the same time, that possibly let us miss a bunch of things. Now, what I mean by that? Well, back on the GameCube, I, I played the Scorpion King, and I actually beat the entire game, at least the main, main story, without realizing I could switch my weapons. Now, what do I mean? Well, you open these chests, and you get new weapons, and it's automatically equipped. So at one point, I stopped opening chests because I had a really good weapon. I didn't want to risk getting another one because I didn't realize you can switch your weapons using the C joystick until after I beat the game. So, yeah, there were good and bad things about it because sometimes we just didn't figure something out until sometimes late in the game or in my circumstance there until after I beat the game. So I'm not saying that either one was better, but it definitely was different. They definitely do hold your hand too much, I think, in certain video games nowadays. And back in the day, I could say they didn't hold your hand enough. It's like back in the NES era, I feel almost like it was a parent that just threw their child in the water and said, you better swim. While a lot of games now are like the parent who child is like 10 years old and they're still giving them like flotation devices. But mom, I could swim. No, no, no. You use those flotation devices now. <laughs> But what do you guys think? Like, which one did you think was better? How they do it now where they give you a lot of instructions on how to do things. So it does help you probably do play the game better. Or how it was back in the day, like NES days especially, when they didn't give you much instructions at all. And you just had to figure a lot of stuff out. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe. And may God bless you all.